Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. And thank you for the panelists for joining us today. While technology can ease the path to well-being for both doctor and patient, there is a reluctance on both the sides to fully adopt it, both in digital care and in brick and mortar practices. Adoption of technology is a continuous, complex, and a multidimensional process that is linked to social, economic, and technological factors that go beyond healthcare. Our topic of discussion today is adoption of technology in healthcare. Today, we have a very esteemed panel with us, and to moderate the discussion, we have Dr. Ashwath, who will talk throughout the webinar and will be arranging through the important points about the topics. We have here two esteemed panelists and speakers with us. Uh, Dr. Shantanu is an alumnus of INSTEAD uh, Fountain Blow 2003 and Royal College of Physicians of London 1997 and holds a master's degree in internal medicine from PGI MER Chandigarh 1995. His career spans over two decades spent in clinical medicine, pharmaceuticals, clinical research, and KPO consulting industry in India and abroad. Although trained as gastroenterologist and internist, his passion lies in developing a robust healthcare information technology system that aims to bridge the gap between the digital and the analog worlds. B.K. Kulkarni retired as VP of Healthcare Siemens Information Technology, Private Limited, Bangalore, on December 31st, 2013. He worked for Siemens India from 1995 to 2013. He has over 34 years of experience in the healthcare domain, 14 of which were in the US and 20 years in India. He has instrumental in, in setting up the health information system, part of the healthcare business for Siemens since 1995. He handled the domestic HIS market from 1995 to 2006. With his 30 years of experience, he has a good understanding of the US and Indian healthcare IT market and also is well versed with cultural diversities between India and USA. Uh, thank you, everybody. And Dr. Ashwat, you can take it from us. Thank you, Viba. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to this webinar uh, hosted by M16 Labs. Uh, this is a series of webinars we have been conducting, uh, trying to dig into uh, various aspects of uh, interaction between healthcare and technology. And I have a special interest in working and solving problems at the crossroads of healthcare business and technology. And today is a special webinar with uh, uh, two different sides of the coin. Uh, one is from the technology side, uh, Mr. BK, and the corporate side. And also we have Dr. Santanu who, is, who can help us out understand the medical side, the medical administration side of the things. Uh, and, uh, you know, technology is rapidly becoming a cornerstone uh, and many overhauls in the healthcare systems we see in regions, uh, cities and countries. There's a lot of innovation happening. There's an avalanche of innovation which has happened over the past uh, uh, decade and more so during this pandemic. It has uh, led us to special moments of uh, transformation in the healthcare industry. Uh, now, uh, when we talk about adoption of technology, there are two main verticals. One is the digital information systems, uh, telecommunication systems, and so on and so forth. And the other is uh, advancements in, uh, you know, uh, medical research, equipment, M health, E health, personal devices, so on and so forth. So majority of the discussion will focus mainly on information technology, and. Uh, you know, I welcome BK to, you know, kind of uh, walk us through the kind of challenges uh, we face in um, in the crossroads of healthcare and technology. Uh, generally, change management is a big deal, uh, irrespective of the industry, especially in healthcare. Uh, go ahead and uh, share your experience and your thought process, BK. Good, good. Thank you, Ashwat and uh, Viva. And uh, Dr. Shantanu, good to cross our roads after many years. I know we had interacted uh, many, many years back. Uh, good to be with you. And uh, again, I don't know how relevant I am uh, with the fast changing technology because my experience uh, 
goes back uh, in 1995 to 2000. So, which is I'm almost talking about uh, 20, 25 uh, years journey, uh, even in India. And before that, uh, I spent good amount of years in the US also. Um, but uh, if I look back, uh, really a lot has changed. Okay. Uh, it is no more just a bunch of uh, servers and uh, uh, computers and uh, throw in a LAN and uh, basically just doing the, the front uh, billing system. But I think over the years, the information system has grown. It is almost becoming like a building an ecosystem, uh, connecting uh, patients, doctors, and also the, uh, the vendors. You know, there are a lot of HIS vendors are now talking about connecting the vendors, payment gateways, and uh, insurance is also becoming a good part. In fact, uh, you know, having spent good amount of time in the US, I was a very, very pro uh, supporter of uh, insurance system um, because in fact, uh, American healthcare system is run by the insurance uh, companies. And uh, I was hoping India will also get there, but uh, we are there, but, uh, uh, in 2025 20, years, am I happy where we are today? Not yet. But I think uh, Ayushman Bharat and uh, other private uh, insurances, I think we are covering a uh, lot of people now uh, uh, under the healthcare delivery system, which is a, a good sign. Okay. And with all this big volume and uh, this one, the, the healthy entity, healthcare entities cannot survive without a good information system that is that is for sure otherwise at that time nobody wanted no we'll just do some uh, uh, basically the uh, information system was a glorified typewriter about uh, 20 years back but uh, i think that scene has changed okay and uh, if i in any rollout of uh, technology if we look it at a very top level it will be people process and uh, technology okay and the metaphor that I would like to use is, uh, you know, the liver, if I put this people process technology on a liver, the fulcrum that is going to hold is going to be the, the mindset and the economics. Okay. So that's ultimately is going to hold these three. We can bring any beautiful system. We can hire best technologists. But at the end of the day, the fulcrum that is going to tilt this way or the, that way is going to be the mindset and the economics, which, which makes sense. The economics we can easily understand, but the thing is about the, the mindset is what uh, uh, we need to change, uh, uh, both on the, the vendor side, providing the system, but more on the, uh, the hospital side, which I'm sure Dr. Santanu will, we can talk more on this one because he was on the other end of the uh, coin. Okay, so I will uh, ask him to deliberate more on that, but I will focus more on the, the software vendor side. Okay, so again, if I take some, uh, I made some uh, uh, different uh, milestones. One is the, the hardware side. The hardware side, definitely the cloud, mobile interfaces, and the falling hardware prices. Uh, this all has make, had made the ecosystem easy compared to 95 to 2000 when we were doing. Okay, the server itself were about, uh, you know, five lakhs, six lakhs, and the PCs were about a lakh. So a hospital said, uh, forget it. You know, we don't have uh, uh, bandages. We don't have the medicine and uh, who wants to spend this much money? But that's, I think, is out of the way, especially the cloud. We don't have to have any big uh, server rooms and uh, whatnot. Now, coming to the software, software is the, really the big elephant in the house. Okay. Everybody thinks it's the easiest and especially now with uh, very slick software that people see it on their uh, mobile phones. Uh, what is there? You know, it's a very simple application. So uh, sometimes people can really generalize this. But um, this is really the big elephant in the room because the software uh, for healthcare is more complex. It is more regulated. Yes, in India, we are still not that regulated, but trust me, we will, we will get there. But if you are addressing this in the Western scenario, it is highly regulated. The software vendors make more money by modifying the, the new rules changes uh, year after year. In fact, they will have a separate team only to handle the chain management. Okay? 
but we are not there yet but we have to be ready with that even in india okay so uh, but you know the software is ever evolving okay there is a one version and somebody else comes up with the a few uh, new bells and whistles and all of a sudden the customers will say no no we don't have this but uh, where uh, the vendors fall into trap is this is where okay yes you can you can always add those things but you need to freeze one particular version that runs with no problems okay but otherwise what happens in the initial stages if the customers or the hospitals start facing problems immediately they will lose heart we we because there are so many people who are standing on the other other line that they don't like the computerization so immediately they will jump and say forget it we told you let's go back to the manual system okay but you know we may not get to that level but uh, so to avoid those thing the software vendors have to really even if it is less functions it doesn't matter but you need to deliver a version that is bug free and works and meets their of course basic minimum criteria you know the billing the insurance billing um, you know the ease of change and it is uh, easy for the doctors to use so some of these things have to be there the other most important thing is the contracting contracting is i will call it as a it is a catch 22 or the chicken and egg story because everybody is in a hurry to make the get the deal okay the, the it's a blind leading the blind and you know the vendors are eager to sign up the contract they promise uh, the world and then when you start implementing the real problem starts so that's why my my request for the software vendors and also on the uh, provider side have a clear contracting what you are going to deliver what functions it will have because if you can spend that time up front a lot of pains can be solved but don't be in a hurry to close the deal and uh, promise yep. everything okay and the other thing is the training 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 okay have a very defined training uh, at different levels at the administrator level at the uh, front line uh, operators uh, most important is the doctors okay. yeah but i'm sure there is a good good news about this one because 95 uh, uh, most of the doctors uh, didn't want to use computers but today the younger generation ashwath you are a good example okay i know your dad will not <laughs> want to use the computers but uh, uh, you live with it so yeah the young young workforce young doctors and nurses who are uh, are going to be the users they will adopt this very quickly okay? yeah so th- that's the good news okay so and also the they have the certification programs okay so mm-hmm. that uh, even people will feel good you know what tomorrow uh, because if i take the us example they always say okay i'm certified on so and so healthcare package okay Correct. because these are all given by the healthcare vendors so you know if some company wants to really brand them they can think of developing some uh, uh, training uh, certifications uh, in their uh, technologies that will also attract for the people to pick up and also you know some kind of an roi you need to demonstrate it is very mm-hmm. difficult i don't want to touch on it but you still need to uh, talk on that and maybe dr santanu can uh, touch on this one the, the roi part but but in summary if i had to say the software vendors have to take pride of what they are doing uh, yep. because it's a very very uh, important uh, domain that you are addressing you are actually saving the life of the people because you know if your report is wrong and the doctor gives some wrong diagnosis and wrong medication you may kill the patient so you take pride in uh, the, uh, the software that you are developing on the healthcare entity side invest invest not only in it but also invest in it infrastructure in fact it is as important as your medical equipments because it is the it that is connecting those crores and crores of rupees of investment that you are doing so you need to really Throughout the system see, see that bigger picture okay um on the last point i would touch is that this is a social media world the feedbacks <laughs> are very important 
So what we do on both sides, uh, people will be watching. I would like to end my talk with one very recent uh, example. Uh, one of my very close relatives uh, went to a particular physician who was a super specialist. They went. Uh, somehow they were not too happy about it. You know, the test and this and that he recommended. And then, uh, you know, he didn't know how to check and all, but he has younger kids. They immediately Googled, found out that uh, this is the pattern uh, this physician has. So they said, forget it. Like, we're not going to go through anything. And they just walked away. So wow. this is the world of the Google. Okay. So yeah. everything what we do, our uh, footprint is on the uh, uh, open internet. Uh, internet domain. So we have to be very watchful of uh, what we do on uh, on all angles. Okay. So Absolutely. That, that's a few points that I had. Fantastic. You know, uh, it, 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 it shows the kind of uh, experience you have over the past few decades uh, and you've covered many different aspects, right from the hardware to software to regulatory aspects. And most important part is the investments, right? So yeah. uh, most of the hospitals tend to spend more on the land and uh, capital equipment and not really look into the operations aspect of it. Uh, um, you know, here where here is where I would like to bring in Dr. Shantanu to, you know, talk about the other side of the coin, the other side of the spectrum, you know. Um, what is it, uh, Dr. Shantanu, with the medical field especially, you know, that we have so much of constraints of adapting to new things? Is it the lack of education or is it the lack of budget or is it the lack of will? What, what's going on? Could you please elaborate? Sure. I think uh, what is important to understand that from a, if I'm on the software vendor, you have to understand the, your customers well. I think, uh, first of all, you should not paint brush them in all in one category. Uh, if you, the approach you will take, if your product is suitable for a single doctor practice versus maybe a small bed, uh, 10, 15 bed nursing home versus a 50 bedded or 100 bedded ICU standalone hospital versus a chain. Is a very different. So that is something, first of all, to understand it. Uh, secondly, uh, you will have to understand if I take the hospital, uh, you know, I can give you some example where I was leading the hospital and even I am a big proponent of digital healthcare. We couldn't digitize our medical records in during my tenure, you know, while we have spent at least uh, 15, 20 crore on capital expenditure and buying different equipments, yeah, during that period. I'm talking about 200 bed cardiac hospital. So what do you have to understand that in a hospital scenario, there are multiple stakeholders, et cetera. And particularly if you are dealing with something like an electronic medical record, I think one of the biggest things that who is going to do electronic medical record is as a CEO, I am not going to use the electronic medical record. Finally, it is to be used by the doctors. So what is their challenge? You know, one of the challenges that any electronic medical record we have used so far is never going to be faster than writing. Yeah. So uh, when a patient comes in an Indian hospital, you know, uh, while there is a requirement in, in global scenario, a lot of documentation, I think clinically still it is accepted that if you actually write on a piece of paper and upload, and our insurance and billing companies are ready to pay for that, right? So it is not a requirement that I need to have a digitized description. And as I said, that if you if you really have to do type and there are several uh, constraints that uh, the doctor side, which I agree, I think one of the imageries you showed is exactly that. That one of the things is that lack of eye contact. You know, if the patient goes to a doctor, they feel that they want the doctor to listen to them carefully. But if you are just looking at the computer and typing it, then they feel. In fact, if you say, okay, you can do it mobile, and they think the doctor is WhatsApping somebody. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so they get more annoyed. Like, you know, you're in a meeting and somebody is using mobile, you feel very annoyed about it right? because he's not paying attention. So I usually stop talking when somebody does that. Yeah, that I say, okay, you, you, I mean, I sort of signal them saying, okay, you finish your task and then listen to me fully. Yeah. yeah. So that's also annoying. So that's one. B, as I said that, you know, uh, in the West, I have practiced both in the East and West. In the Eastern Western country, I'll see a 20 patients are clinic. Whereas in an Eastern country, I may see a government hospital and 150 patients are clinic. Right? So the speed by which I will have to do, uh, operate is very, very 
fast you know very so high just give a you know if, if you if i write it will be much faster so how can we make it more faster how can i make it so that is something what you know so uh, when you are approaching a hospital you have to understand that there is a there is a doctor there is a administrator there is an it head each of them are looking for a different different you know and i think uh, information technology vendors there is a lot to learn from medical technology vendors suppose mm-hmm. as i said that at the same time where i have not procured any kind of information technology i have procured cat labs yeah so how do they you know let, let's take a stent they come up with a new stent they first go and explain the doctors very well what is the clinical need you know how this is going to be the changing uh, the clinical outcome of the patients yeah once the doctor convinces they usually what happens is then that doctor typically reached us to administrator that look doctor chatterji i think this is a new stand it is good uh, good value it's a good clinical value if i am the person who is leading the hospital as a ceo then i said okay this sounds good but how much i will have to put what is the roi you know what would be the revenue if i am going to do put the stent is there a separate charge i am going to do or is it my angioplasty cost revenue can go up or do i have to absorb the cost straight away my that question will come is it a fixed price so i will look at my roi if i got a new medicine the same thing i i say so what is my margin etc right then you have to look at the who is the other person like the people who are using them and your the cath lab technician etc so if i take that mm-hmm. leap similar into the information technology what is the benefit to the doctor what is the clinical benefit to the patients what is it mean for the associated staff what is meant for it system like is there a lot of infrastructure as sir was telling that you know it is there's no infrastructure is there a laptop etc so is there and then finally what is the roi so i think that is very very important but uh, i think one of the key thing if you if you divide the uh, uh information technology in the gross we speaking there is one is which is business functions you see a good yeah. option there you know generally and most the of the clinical functions yeah and the clinical function so again in the business function i would say the few realities if you go to a very small hospital you will find that the they can still manage with the pen and paper <coughs> and the cost yeah. ratio is doesn't favor and on top of that single the hospitals and doctors unfortunately i shouldn't be saying that but that's true that there are uh, if you if you actually do it not account everything if there is a tax component advantage you get you know whereas if you digitize everything that everything get very very uh, you know uh, very formal so there is that element to that so so from a from a small operator point of view the amount of money i lose on this the benefit has to surplus that yeah and in a small scale that benefit not that much you know it might be worth putting one person with 5000 rupees salary who can do this rather than putting up but moment the scale goes up the technology brings so you'll have to understand that uh, and in the clinical adoption i think the adoption by clinicians is very very important i strongly believe the world will go more towards voice based technology like mm-hmm. you have an emr but how am i entering the data you know yeah entering data currently is a typing right typing thing but if i speak to it i think that will be you know more and more we are getting technology which is voice based technologies are, are close to that so, so data entry is a very important point so for the clinical is concerned you know uh, right. so that is uh, uh, one thing i can talk about uh, so that's in summary as i said that do not put all the segments understand your segment where your target is a single doctor small nursing home moderately single unit larger hospital or big hospital you have a strategy for each if you go to a bigger place remember who are the stakeholder what is the pathway of the demand where does the demand generate you know yeah often information technology try to generate the demand from the it head can you figure out a way to generating demand from the clinical guy that there this is where the as i said i gave you the example i yep. certainly not going to decide to buy a ct scan or cath lab in my house even if i am the ceo the demand will generate from my cardiologist the clinician yeah so can you generate that is the most powerful demand in a hospital demand generated by but it always start try to generate the demand from the it head or maybe 
So they think that if I get the top, and then it doesn't work like that. You know, as I said, that I was sitting in the top, in spite of my own desire to digitize this thing, I couldn't do it. So it is. <laughs> and there's a lot to learn from pharma and medical technology world. I think they have mastered this over 50 years or 40 years as long as they're operating. Uh, and uh, I think these are the few things. Uh, you know, the fundamentally, yeah. I, what I always say that you start from the problem end. You know, uh, the software companies generally I have uh, seen the tendency to find out the solution first and then, and then look for the problem. Uh, yeah. If we start from the other end, I think we'll be able to solve that. Uh, yeah, that's better. a very interesting perspective. Uh, thank you both of you for this, uh, you know, words, bird's eye perspective on both sides of the spectrum. You know, there are a few questions, you know, like how do we start computerization process with the electronic health records and how do we bring the patients in this transformation movement, you know, because now the hospitals, healthcare centers, we del deal with many different generations. You know, one generation is over there who don't want to, you know, uh, have anything to do with technology, while the other end of the spectrum, we see some of the younger chaps uh, who want everything on their phone, you know, uh, they don't want to deal with people. So, so there is a mix of, you know, uh, uh, people's expectations, the patient's expectations as well. So how do we br bridge the gap? How do we make sure that the hospital staff are motivated to, to adapt to newer technology and, you know, patients can be a part of this transformation process? What are your thoughts on this? Is it a question for me? Uh, 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 yeah. Both of you can take it. Uh, you can, uh, BK, why don't you... Maybe you, you can uh, add from your point of view, then I will add my sure. point, uh, doctor. Sure. Uh, see, I think what you see, I think it's a very valid point. Uh, when it comes to patients, there are different kinds of patients. So what uh, the as a hospital, what I would like to have an interface where both kinds of patients can be... Can be uh, can be uh, catered, but through one system. What I meant by that, if I have an app interface, the app interface can have a patient interface and a front office interface, a doctor interface, nurse interface. So when my dad wants to connect to the hospital, he'll probably call. And the person who is sitting in the call center can use that interface to enter the data. Whereas I enter, I interact with the hospital, I would like to do with my app. But finally, yeah. this needs to go in one same spine or same system. Currently, the hospitals, what happened, they have two different systems. You have one yeah. system which is internal. Maybe you have created an app and connected, but you have forgotten to connect your call center to this. Yeah. Yes. So, so one single system with a different interface is the answer. It's a very yeah. nice take. Uh, 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 agreed. Uh, as far as the EMR building, is uh, I always believe it uh, builds the, how you are going to adopt the different systems within the HIS system, okay? First, of mm -hmm. course, is your registration system has to be a strong registration system that connect that collects basic demographics and uh, uh, basic uh, vital information. After that, as long as you have connected your uh, radiology lab system and your doctor's notes, Okay, mm -hmm. so once we connect these in our system, I think the EMR is automatically built into the system. That is one part. Okay, mm -hmm. now who is going to adopt within the system? Yes, everybody, doctor, now you go from one specialist to the other specialist as long as they know your MRN number, even though you are seeing the other doctor inside the system, they, they all can access the same information. And uh, most of your digital equipments now with the PAC system in place, all your images are automatically have got yeah. digital images are again connected to the same MRN. So the uh, uh, electronic medical record is actually, in my view, is developed without any much of an effort as long as these are integrated systems. Okay, that's one part. Now on the outside, as Dr. Shantanu was talking about, the others accessing it. Okay, that could be with a, a, a mobile, it could be as long as you are allowing them to access because, uh, of course, uh, 
there is a lot of regulations, you know, the HIPAA mm-hmm. regulations, whether you really want uh, anybody should uh, know your medical records. There are so many ethical privacy things, related issues, privacy yeah. related, as long as you make that very bulletproof, uh, that could be an uh, external interface uh, coming through. But the internal EMR has to develop with the workflow of the uh, patient flow and how good your HIS system is. That's my view. Uh, Dr. Shantanu, your view, sir? Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, any, any additional questions? You... No, uh, I think uh, one is, um, uh, BK spoke about the regulatory aspect. Like in the West, we already know that the, you know, the regulatory mechanism is pretty mature. Whereas in India, we are still evolving, you know. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on that? How do you... Yeah, I think that's... Hmm. See, it has got both sides of the coin. It's an opportunity as well as challenge uh, because uh, opportunity as an entrepreneur, I always look at the opportunity. So you'll be able to move fast. You'll be able to create solutions with less cost, etc. Uh, whereas uh, the, the downside is that suddenly a new regulation come and you become on the wrong side of the... Uh, so you will need to, to probably sort of crystal ball that what's the future, what is coming. So not having any standard is not a good idea, mm-hmm. but uh, you you have some rational thinking that what could be the idea. But uh, again, you need to customize. If you try to make it a HIPAA compliant, etc., and you bring a solution to an Indian market, will you be able to pay I mean, the cost you are bearing, whether that will be uh, that, that value you have to uh, figure it out. Yeah. And uh, BK, India is kind of really price sensitive. How, how do you kind of work around that? Uh, the way we worked is, as uh, Dr. Shantanu was telling, we, we segmented the market. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go to a very 10-bed hospital or 20-bed hospital in a small town, he's not interested because who can pretty much uh, take care of uh, uh, those things. So you definitely have to target your segment, which are the, you know, the 300 bed, 400 bed, 500 bed hospitals yeah. who have, who also, as I said, the demand is there. I think I really like that point, which is the demand generation. Okay? Demand because generation, yeah. As he rightly said, the clinicians will tell you which particular make uh, machine they that they demand, want. Yeah. Even not only that they want a CT, they want so and so manufacturer CT because they are already worked on it. But that yeah. uh, luxury we don't have as a information system vendor. This is where I think we have to be more innovative and our uh, software try to show them the advantages, uh, the uh, ease of use and some kind of an ROI that we can demonstrate. Absolutely. And also tell them that you, know, you are a vendor who will stay behind, make those modifications, make those changes, okay? Uh, yeah. And also, uh, one of the points I forgot in my this one is the hospitals are will be looking for guidance. It's not only just the 100%. software; it is, it is an infrastructure support yeah. because it is the infrastructure that runs your uh, software. So you could uh, tell them it is not only just the software will take care of the infrastructure. Then those are the things will uh, kind of uh, make them to uh, go with uh, the investment. Yeah. And in fact, some of the, uh, you know, I do, you know, interact with some of the consultants out there who help in new hospital building and stuff. I always tell them architecture is important, but at the same time, once the building is up, once the beds are up, once the people have started working, you need to know how the operations is going to be controlled as well. So right at the stage of planning, you need to incorporate that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, maybe Dr. Shantri, you can take up this question, you know, as, as medical professionals, right from day one, we, we are in the medical school, we are taught, have an eye contact with the patient. I, I, you covered that in terms of uh, having a voice-based system. Uh, but also we are taught that many different machines like laser machines and, you know, the anesthesia machines, the ventilator machines, as students, we are kind of said, don't touch it. You know, anything goes wrong, you can risk the life of the patient. So is that some sort of a uh, uh, psych which is built into f- physicians and nurses, which prevents them from adapting and trying out new technology in the workspace? 
Well, I think you have to understand that uh, medicine as a profession is a conservative profession. We have been yep. trained in a way that first you are on the side of caution so that mm -hmm. your mistake does not lead to harm. No harm principle, right? Yep. So uh, you do not take a risk uh, because you are working on behalf of somebody else from the patient. So your chance will be to minimize the risk. As mm -hmm. opposed to any other business processes, the business is all about taking risk. So as a, as a doctor, we are always trying to see, okay, don't take any risk, do no harm, and then, you know, conservative. So we are always worried about saving patients' life, etc. Exactly the reason you said that I don't do anything so the patient will die. So yep. that is very fundamental, you will have to understand. So risk minimization is a very important thing. What can happen if there is a, if there is a mistake and that can lead to a loss of life or something, you know? That you have to showcase well that you are able to re bring those error minimal, you know, uh, I mean, yeah. zero error. Like you can't say, okay, my error is below 5% because uh, this 1% uh, below 5%, it happens to, it leads to a clinical error that will may cost a life. So yeah. I think from that point of view, it's not going to change much because it is a life and death. If this is where the healthcare business is very, very different. Any other business say, okay, we have an MVP. Yeah. <laughs> We will we'll try it. Yeah. But you see, again, I would like to bring the medical device and this thing. So that's why there is regulators who will say, hey, now you can use it. It has to go to clinical trial. It has to go to proven. It has to go to CMR, you know. And fortunately or unfortunately, technology, what is used being in medical, currently does not go through it. But ideally, it should be. Yeah. It should be. It yeah. should be. Like there should yeah. be an FDA approval for healthcare technology. Like we have a, as I say, I can't bring suddenly a medicine, you know. Uh, say, yeah. karke dekh lo, you know, you try, you know, it may work, you know, you don't work with that fashion. Yeah. So we, we, we have a phase, phase one, phase four trial. And uh, there is a genuine reason for being such conservative in medical field. So we need to, to understand that if you are coming in healthcare, it will not be another business where you can say, okay, le less than 5%. Yeah. It's, it's good. No, it has to be really zero. <laughs> Chalega attitude won't work. Absolutely. You know, uh, you spoke about a very important point, the regulatory aspects. Of course, uh, uh, Indian Parliament has introduced the Disha law in 2017, but it is yet in the draft stage. It's not in fully implemented. We have seen some amount of MCI guidelines on telemedicine softwares, which have flooded the market. Uh, but one of the key things is patient data privacy. Now, that concept is yet to come into uh, force, both from a you know, clinical hospital management perspective, as well as the patient perspective. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, both of you, uh, any one of you can take. Yeah. Sorry, you wanted to take it? Yeah, uh, I would say, uh, which is important, uh, 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 both East and West are totally the other way. The, on the Western side, they are so uh, hung up on it. It is uh, actually uh, amazing. You know, you can't uh, talk about even somebody's driver license. Uh, you can't talk about social security number. Forget about your uh, blood count and your uh, uh, blood pressure. Okay. Uh, that goes uh, very extreme. Whereas on the our side, I think everybody and everybody talks about in the hallway and uh, we, we talk about it. I know this is a a subject of very interest to me, but I don't have uh, any particular uh, which is right or wrong. I think in the Western world, they, they drag too much, but we are too loose on this one. I would uh, wait for Dr. Santanu's uh, comment on this one. See, uh, yeah, I think let's take a patient privacy issue, right? Yeah. Uh, so if we, as I say, I practice both the world. Now, you go to a government hospital or a maybe a private chamber in a chawl. Mm. Okay. If you ever visited that, how does it work? The doctor is sitting in the same room. Patients are sitting in a, in a bench. Yeah. And doctor and patients are discussing, you know, uh, I, I just, just to make it this thing, I see the same thing with astrologer and lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you go to astrologer chamber and everybody's hearing your problems. Right? Yeah. So the question is, uh, it's again coming down to economics, right? Can the doctor afford 
to rent another room for waiting room in Dharavi and will the patient pay for it? Secondly, in the same thing in government hospital, uh, you, you, the doctor is seeing and there are 20 people are listening because I want to get the next, right? So do you have the infrastructure and everything costs money? So I think it will get there, but it will take time. You have to understand that uh, uh, we have to provide the first the basic care before you think about privacy, etc. So while this is important, uh, but I think it is, it is the Marshall's uh, basic hierarchical need. Hierarchy, the pyramid. We are at the bottom at this point of time. Yeah, very well. Uh, uh, also, uh, Dr. Shantane, as you know, in the Western world, it yeah. is more of a medical, legal, and yeah. the legal aspect of it, they try to protect it. Uh, yeah. You know, people uh, yeah. getting sued and uh, people uh, uh, taking that as an advantage to fire somebody, or uh, there are so many other uh, society driven reasons why they want to practice those things. And luckily, we don't have those restrictions in India. Along with this room description, very nicely you said, you know, we just have one room and the doctor is saying uh, 100 patients, you know, that's our system. Yeah. And that, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, let's quickly jump to the next major topic, you know, next major question I had. Um, education system, right? The nurses, the doctors, the surgeons, the way we are trained. Do you think introduction of information technology, electronic medical records is a good idea to introduce it right at the medical education level? Because many of the medical education centers, according to my knowledge, they don't have a robust uh, hospital information system or an EMR, or maybe most of them right now in, in 2021 are running on paper records. Do you think it's a good time to, you know, look at ways how to transition uh, digital digitally in medical education itself? PK, uh, what are your thoughts? No, of course, the answer is always yes. Okay. But uh, all teaching hospitals, uh, they, they don't have any basic uh, computerization? Uh, not to the extent of what I have seen in universities in the West, mm -hmm. okay. not to the extent. Then, uh, definitely it is uh, time to have those things, uh, all the medical uh, hospitals, because obviously all the doctors uh, spend most of their time after first year in the ward and clinic only. You know, it's a good idea that uh, they will start using that instead of uh, running around with the papers. That's my yep. very strong view. Yeah, except for a few top institutions, I don't think... Uh, Majority of the medical dental nursing colleges have any anything called as EMR or anything close to EMR. So, what are your what is your thoughts about that, Doctor Chaturvedi? Yeah, I think that I think you bring a very valid point. Uh, I think that's a good strategy in my view. Uh, if we are to the the people who are proponents in the system of digital this thing, I think they should start very early. Yeah, the habit to build uh, build. Uh, as an early uh, doctor, I think will will make you make the difference. I agree with you. I mean, uh, going slightly tangentially, when I grew up as a doctor, uh, the way we used to look for medical evidence, go to a uh, yeah. go to a library and look in the books. Now nobody does that. Yeah, Sorry. but there was a transition when it happened to me when I moved to India to UK. I started looking at the bedline and things like that. So I had to go through that personal transition. I hope current medical students are on medline from day one because of access to internet. So anything you inculcate very early on, you know, will actually make that. I think that's a very valid point. Yeah. Uh, but only thing is the, as a, if I am to bring in a small startup uh, angle to it, how does a startup do that? You know, it's like a very big task, which is at the <laughs> government level of somebody, but uh, I'm not sure how you will be able to use that. You know, if you start today somewhere, the impact it will bring in 15 years down the road it may not be a direct impact to you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, startup is you, not. You have to think that, uh, yeah, because your every dollar is 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 very, very important to you. So, important. is it a best dollar spent? I am not sure. Uh, can we do a influence of policy? 
of so that somebody else does it for you, maybe it's better approach. Yeah, that's an interesting take. Um, yeah, that's a lot of things to chew on and uh, you know get in get a perspective on that. Uh, but having spoken about that, you know, in in India, government systems, right? Like if if uh, the way I've understood it. Wherever there is a post office, wherever there is a police station, whereas there, there is a railway station, there is a primary health center. Now, we see two different aspects. On the one side, we have large corporate hospitals who are on the game, right? But how can we bring the government on par and maybe policy matters? You can speak a little bit about that. How we can work with government and, you know, look at primary health centers or digitalization or is it too early too mature to think of anything of that sort i guess uh, yeah go ahead uh, i guess uh, issue is that even again you have to bring value again you have to understand break it into bit by bit there is a government officials you know Mm -hmm. who are there and then the doctors, you know. Yeah. So what are the lever po leverage points for both of them? What are the incentives? incentives what are their yeah. intensive for these two categories, the bureaucrats or technocrats who are decision maker and then user, right? So uh, how do you, where do you generate the demand from? Are you going to generate the demand from the one sitting at the center and try to push down to the throat of clinicians, or would you like to do it from the clinical side and then get it that? Uh, if I have to take a uh, shot at it, I will try to find out in government system there are not there are people who wants to, to do modern thinking people yep. and both at that policy level and the bottom level, and maybe provide them with a pilot. You know, mm -hmm. but with an agreement that if the pilot succeeds with an agreed milestone, then they will take it forward. Don't yeah. do a pilot for the sake of without any doing a pilot. What is uh, no? The two things is very very important. What are the KPIs, measurable KPIs, where you say pilot is successful or failure? And yeah. secondly, what is that the government will do if there is a successful pilot? Yeah. If you did a pilot and it's successful, and if it is not taken forward, the effort is wasted. So Correct. first you have to get into this and look, I'm happy to fund you for six mm -hmm. months. But after that, I need a commitment that you will at least digitize five of your primary health center. Yeah. Got it. But then the government will like to know from the other side, okay, how do you define success? Just putting the system is not success, right? So define the success factor and have an honesty to measure its profit. Brilliantly put. In fact, I always keep asking this question, you know, in especially in Indian context, right? Uh, BK, before I come to you, uh, you know, you I know you have some thoughts to share, but, you know, if you look at it, police services have Indian po uh, IPS, right? Postal services have a uh, UPSC exam. Uh, railway services have railway officers. Why don't we have health management uh, as a UPSC topic, you know, uh, maybe it's one small topic somewhere, but why don't we have Indian health services as a vertical? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a question which comes into my mind most commonly, but yeah, BK, sorry. to yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good point. I think the, all the noise that is going on the television after the pandemic and the second wave, uh, you know, all we are talking is, you know, we always get up and, uh, only when there is a fire, we start digging the well, you know, as our Canada proverb says. Uh, I think this uh, pandemic wave two hopefully will tell us some, uh, teach us some lessons to plan, prepare. Uh, those things uh, may happen. And you're right, you know, it, it could uh, lead to some of those at least early discussions. But on the going back to the old point, as you said, you know, every small village has a post office, has got a railway station and they have a PHC center, okay? But uh, can they have this uh, information technology? That is, I think that you were asking. Uh, I, I can see that because I think the telemedicine and some of these, uh, uh, because of the mobiles, 
uh, even though you may not have a direct internet, but uh, thanks to the uh, data part of the mobile, uh, today we can pretty much, whether the internet works or not, we all survive. Even in Bangalore, sometime uh, uh, broadband goes, but uh, the uh, data part of the mobile internet is quite strong enough. So any application that is going to help the patient, okay, through the telemedicine would be a good start to start connecting the, the rural to the central place. I think, uh, and that can catch up like a wildfire. Okay, if you yeah. can really show here is the solution. I think some of the uh, remote uh, eye testing, all those things are really catching up now. So, you know, yeah. you, they don't have to come all the way to the big place. Yeah. People are coming with some innovative ideas. Yeah. And that brings to the last uh, little bit component of the webinar. We are just about eight minutes away. Yeah. You know, um, the last bit you highlighted, you know, many of these specialty based devices out there are getting mobile, right? Yeah. They're getting remote, right? Uh, now we cannot just restrict to electronic medical records or hospital information systems. We've Correct. got to expand the way the system kind of interacts with these various new innovations, right? Be it oral cancer detection with a handheld device or uh, eye screening somewhere in remote corner. We cannot get the specialist everywhere. So at least we can get the information to the specialists. Right. So what are your thoughts on that? Dr. Shantanu, maybe you can take it up. Sorry, can you repeat that? I had a little disturbance here. Sorry. Yeah. No worries. Uh, so my question was, in the last uh, aspect of the topic, right, uh, adoption of technology, until now we spoke about policies, hardware, software, EMR system, HIS system, telemedicine system, so many aspects of it. The other major component is on the medical device side, there is so much of innovation happening on the sure. M health side, there is so much innovation happening. How do we ensure that this core central system uh, kind of communicates very well to these new innovations and it's kind of open to talk to new new? Yeah, new I think devices. that's a very important point. More and more we are seeing uh, what you call IoT. You know, more and more devices we see are IoT enabled where the uh, data of uh, is coming centrally to the health function system. So anybody is able to develop this kind of a, a HIS software, they should have APIs to talk to this yeah. thing. That is the key thing that we have to do. And that's the, you know, it will go. Uh, not that every data is very useful, but at least uh, you have the complex with the data coming and then you can decide uh, that. And secondly, as I said, that not every data is useful. So over the time, if you can get hundreds and thousands and millions of data, which one, if you have got a artificial intelligence system to understand what data is required and what is making uh, making a sense out of the data. First, let all data come and say, okay, what is the pattern? What is the noise, et cetera. So those sort of capability has to be built on uh, that. But uh, I think uh, that is something which is continued to go. And yeah. uh, we should anticipate that changes going into that direction more than more. And we should get ready for that. Fantastic. Uh, okay, I, I think thoughts? that that infrastructure is already there, according to me, because the healthcare system always has been talking to different uh, devices because uh, mm -hmm. uh, the the protocols with HL7 and TICOMS and other things, uh, uh, the vendors have already uh, well ahead in that. So anybody, whoever it is designing or uh, whether it is on the device side or on the information system side, they are aware of the interfaces that is required. So... Uh, that is a, not of a big concern to me. It, it will happen. So uh, I think we are uh, out of question and we are uh, nearing the end of the scheduled time. Any last few closing comments? Uh, just keep up doing the good work and uh, this is uh, needed. <laughs> uh, again, the, the point I said is, you know, the, the demand generation part, I think it is left to the software vendors to do that. Uh, yeah. So you need to be more creative on that part. I think that is the takeaway for me with this uh, seminar. Yeah. And Dr. Santanu, your thoughts, sir? Any closing comments? Yeah, I think uh, at the end of the day, the reason the extra of healthcare is patients. So I think 
you remember that technology is a means to an end you know so i would strongly encourage to people to think start from the patient need and how you are connected to solving that need do not make the patient software itself as the end yep. you know finally an enabler the service you provide you spoke about primary health care how does the indian pharma get a actual standard of care when he gets a heart attack you know that is the problem you are solving you are not solving a problem of creating an app where the farmer's ecg reaches to somebody but he still doesn't get the treatment right yeah yeah so yeah. can you think last mile delivery goal is to delivering the care final yeah. goal is not delivering the software and how Absolutely. you are playing that part if you can start from that end very well thought and you know i cannot uh, uh, gather enough words to thank you both for this uh, a fantastic discussion uh, i would like to invite my colleague uh, uh, mr santanu sarkar to deliver the vote of thanks thank you dr ashpat and uh, thank you to the panelist for this fantastic discussion and uh, especially uh, mr kulkarni i would like to thank you uh, for bringing up the training aspect uh, during digitization process and uh, the regulatory aspect also i would also like to thank dr uh, shantanu dr shantanu jatopadha for his uh, interesting view from uh, the hospital perspective uh, you know the demand generation pros- perspective uh, uh, dr shantanu spoke about is really interesting and uh, really enli- enlightening for us and uh, that that is that is which is uh, very important uh, for any hospital and with this i would like to end the vote of thanks and uh, we would like to call it a day thank you thank very you much thank you everyone thank you dr ashwat thank you thanks, thanks to the participants as well wherever yeah. they are seeing <laughs> yeah thank you thank you stay safe thank you thank you, thank you gentlemen bye. stay bye. safe bye. during this covid times yes yeah. yes thank you bye 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 thank you thank you viva bye